Hello, everyone. Welcome to the overview of Solar PV webinar. It's currently 2 p.m., so let's get started. My name is Portia Baldad, and I'm the marketing manager for the NERVA Summerhill team. Inerva and Summerhill is supporting Emission Reduction Alberta with design and execution of the Energy Savings for Business program. Thanks for joining us. Before we get started, let's go over a few housekeeping items. There are quite a few people attending today's webinar. As such, all microphones have been muted to avoid interruptions. Throughout the presentation, you can submit questions to our team through the webinar control panel's questions section. We will then Answer those questions during our Q&A period at the end of today's webinar. If you're having technical difficulties, please email Amanda at info at eralberta.ca and we'll do our best to help. If you can't resolve your technical issues or need to leave early, we'll be posting a recording of this webinar on the ESB program website. It will include both the presentation and the Q&A session. Today, we'll begin with a brief program overview of, of the solar PV category. We'll then, review eligible, we'll then review the eligibility as well as the application process. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll end with a Q&A period. Today, Brittany Tran, Emission Reductions Alberta's program analyst, will provide a little background on the ERA and the ESB program. Then my colleagues Patrick McMahon and Soria Narcia will jump in to guide us through motor to guide us through solar PV. Now let's get right into it. Here's Brittany to kick off today's presentation. Thanks, Portia. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions while supporting the economy benefits everyone. And ERA's vision is anchored in the belief that our success is measured in both economic and environmental terms. Emissions Reduction Alberta has been investing in Alberta technologies and companies since 2009 to reduce emissions and grow Alberta's economy. Our investments help innovators develop and demonstrate GHG reducing technologies that lower costs, improve competitiveness, and accelerate Alberta's transformation towards decarbonization. We've worked across many sectors and have recently broadened our scope with the Energy Savings for Business program. This program will accelerate the adoption of commercially available technologies that will help businesses cut costs and reduce emissions. Learning from previous programs with similar scope, we've adapted the program to be more streamlined. We know time is money to Alberta businesses and are committed to fast turnaround times. For standard applications, this could be as quick as two days. The program has been designed to reflect the realities of the pandemic. Incentive payments will be made electronically and all program materials are available in a digital downloadable format that can be easily printed by contractors or participants. We've also expanded the measures list to include categories that have not been offered previously, such as geothermal and compressed air. We've also made sure to include measures that are accessible to all businesses like ceiling and wall insulation, refrigerated case covers, efficient motors, lighting systems, and high efficiency windows. We will have over 300 measures to offer in this program. Where efficiency measures help reduce energy needs, on-site generation can help offset energy needs of the facility, significantly reducing utility costs. For on-site generation, ESB offers two technologies, solar PV and combined heat and power. Through Alberta's microgeneration regulation, connecting these systems to the grid is a streamlined and straightforward process. Power generated will either go straight to the facility when it's needed or be automatically exported for credit against energy bills. This technology will help lower long-term energy costs and decrease emissions. A webinar will also be hosted tomorrow on lighting system and control measures to help guide contractors and applicants through the process. If you missed any of our past webinars, we will have them posted to the website. To register or view the webinars, please visit eralberta.ca slash ESB. Before we start with the solar specific portion of the webinar, we wanted to share a quick note about the application process. We are seeing incomplete applications submitted in order to secure a funding reservation. Submitting an, submitting an incomplete application does not secure funding. If a pre-project application is submitted but is not approved, it does not hold a place in line for the incentive reservation. 
The incentive is only reserved after the pre-project application has been approved. It's important to submit good quality applications with complete documentation or the, or the review cannot occur comprehensively. If the application is complete or missing any of this information, it creates delays in our review and approval process as it will be returned to you to get this information. With that note, we're happy you could join us today and review solar PV. I'll pass it off to Patrick and Soria to take you through how to apply for this category of incentives. Thanks for the introduction, Brittany, and welcome to today's attendees. I'm Patrick McMahon, the Contractor Support Manager with the NERVA Summerhill team. Today's webinar will focus on solar photovoltaic projects and applications to the Energy Savings for Business program. First things first, the general eligibility requirements apply for solar PV projects. However, it's worth noting proactively that solar PV systems in new construction projects or expansions to existing arrays, as well as installations to existing facilities are all eligible for this measure category. Of course, other general eligibility requirements must also be satisfied. Participants and contractors should be comfortable with the participant terms and conditions and follow up with any questions regarding a specific project or general eligibility. As an eligible measure, incentive tiers exist based on the size of the system with different rates based on systems less than 15 kilowatts and a lower rate for systems that are 15 kilowatts to two megawatts. The incentive rate will be based on the DC system size in kilowatts, and the incentive will be limited to 25% of eligible project costs, up to $250,000 per facility. Similar to all project applications, the application incentive must be $1,000 or greater. Surya, could you share some of the primary requirements for successful solar PV applications? Sure. Hello, everyone. So the the very first step is to ensure that the project complies with Alberta's microgeneration regulation. We will also require that this, the submission of Form A at the pre pre project stage, and at the post project application, the Form A with the interconnection approval granted must also be provided. Please note that the interconnection approval must have been received within one year of the application date. Approvals older than one year are not eligible. As uh, stipulated in the microgeneration regulation, all PV output must be used within the facility. Another very important requirement is that the contractor listed on the application must be a member in good standing with Solar Alberta, the Canadian Renewable Association or the Electrical Contractors Association of Alberta. We will also require that the PV systems have the following minimum warranties, a 20 year performance warranty, a 10 year manufacturing warranty on the modules, a 10 year manufacturing warranty on the inverters, and at least a year of workmanship warranty from the contractor. Regarding performance, the program requires that the solar yield of the PV system be at least 75% based on system design with, op with, with optimal azimuth and tilt at that project location. Thanks, Surya. It might be valuable to communicate to participants how the program will evaluate the 75% design system production relative to optimal energy output. With this as a guide, applicants can replicate this test to ensure all program expectations can be satisfied. As has been previously communicated, the program will test this consideration using the free online solar system design software, PVWatts. There are three scenarios evaluated through the application process in this context. The first is that the review team will build the system as defined through the application in PV watts. The second step will be to create a base case where system losses are set to 20%. In the third scenario, the review team will configure PV watts for a program defined optimal case. Let's go through these scenarios. 
In scenario one, the review team will populate PV watts based on what has been submitted through the application process, including the key drivers of array performance. Things like location, latitude and longitude, module tilt, azimuth, assumed system losses, module type and performance, and array type. This configuration, if accepted, will be the basis of the considered incentive. Scenario two tests a program defined base case for the array, where no variables from the application scenario are changed with the exception of the design system losses. In this scenario, design system losses are set to 20%. This will become the numerator in the calculation to confirm if the system design satisfies the 75% performance threshold. The denominator of this test is defined in scenario three, which is the optimal case for the location and technical components of the array. In this scenario, the review team will modify the PV watts design to set the tilt to the latitude of the site and the azimuth is set at 180 degrees. These are simplifying assumptions the review team uses to model the optimal scenario. It is understood that there are lots of different parameters that impact the optimal solar yield so this is to be as streamlined as possible. And the tilt and azimuth were chosen to do this. Model, modeled system losses stay constant at 20% from scenario two. To bring this all together, scenario one reflects the application's estimated annual total energy output as submitted and must pass the solar yield test by evaluating a comparison between scenario two and scenario three. Practically, if we were to divide the array performance of the base case by the array performance of the optimal case, we should see a result greater than 0.75. If this is true, the application will satisfy the solar yield test as the array is meeting the required minimum of 75% of the system design with optimal azimuth and tilt at the project location. This is a comparison of a standard program-defined base case holding design parameters constant to a standard program-defined optimal case based on array attributes if, recognized in an op if reorganized in an optimal configuration to the sun, even if not practically possible. With this specific consideration behind us, let's move to the application process for solar PV incentives through the application portal. This run through starts after the add measure button has been clicked on the measures and project, project summary stage of an application. This is available to the participant or their contractor if granted access by the participant earlier in the application process. The user adding the solar measure will select solar PV from the measure category dropdown, then on site power generation solar PV and then choose if the measure being added is less than 15 kilowatts or greater than 15 kilowatts. With the capacity of the array selected, the application form will expand and the first prompt is for the quantity, which in the case of this measure should be one for the array. You'll need to identify if the on-site generation is being added to an existing structure and select retrofit or if it's being integrated into a new construction project and select new construction. Form A must be submitted with the pre-approval application. You'll need to confirm the status of the interconnection agreement and upload the Form A application by dragging the document to the gray area on the screen or clicking to prompt the opportunity to find the file and upload it. The latitude and longitude of the array location is required and the DC system size in kilowatts needs to be entered. The type of module used uh, will need to be selected and, and the array type fix or access tracking, specifying the mode of access tracking. The model total system losses used in the array design will be required and the tilt and azimuth in degrees will need to be inputted. The system design documentation will need to be added, again dragged into the gray area or clicked on to prompt an upload opportunity. The known or assumed approximate or the known assumed or approximated retail electricity rate will be added, and the estimated AC energy production in kilowatt hours will need to be recorded for all months through the year. 
This will calculate the total annual AC energy when the Get Calculation button is ultimately clicked. The next two requirements are the spec sheets for the specific, specific panel being used in the array and the inverter spec sheet. These are added as other attachments are dragged into the gray area or click to explore to find the file and upload. For the panel spec sheet, where a range of outputs are documented, please identify specifically what performance is used in the design of this array. This will require marking up the specification sheet and will contribute to an expeditious review of the application. There is room on the application for notes to be added, which will be seen by the review team if any special considerations need to be communicated. The calculated emissions reductions are based on inputs through the submission and system assumptions and are provided for information purposes. The final inputs for the measure inclusion relate to cost, the equipment cost and material cost, labor cost, and design cost, excluding GST. With all of that information provided, click the prompt for Get Calculation, and this will flag any missing field and populate the fields that had previously indicated calculated value. Have a scroll through the submission to confirm the details as entered. If you see something that needs to be changed, Click Edit Details. You will see now that the values relating to the incentive have been calculated. The measure incentive is the incentive based on the measures list and the size of the array. The maximum eligible measure incentive is calculated based on the 25% incentive cap relative to the total eligible project costs. The total eligible measure incentive is the lower of the two values and reflects the value of the incentive being applied for in the project application. With a full review of the measure to add to the application, click Add Measure if it is complete in reflecting the project. Let's work through an example to understand cost allocation across multiple measures included in a single application. Let's imagine a warehouse is adding two rooftop solar arrays. One system has a design potential of 10 kilowatts and another that is 20 kilowatts. Maybe these are in different parts of the roof with different tilt or azimuth parameters. You can see example costs for this project on the screen, including the equipment costs, labor costs, and design costs for the project. You can also see the potential incentive for each eligible measure. In this case, the incentive is 65 cents per watt DC for systems less than 15 kilowatts and 50, 50, 50 cents per watt DC for systems 15 kilowatts to two megawatts. Note that with the incentive limit of 25% of the eligible project cost, if only the equipment costs were included for either of the measures, the incentive would not be maximized. In this case, the system that is 10 kilowatts has a cost of $15,000, and if included in isolation, would be limited to $3,750 of incentives, but is eligible for a $6,500 incentive based on the prescriptive rebate rate. This should highlight the value in fairly allocating costs across all measures included in the project application. For the benefit of the participant, a fair allocation of the labor cost and design cost should be applied to each measure in the application. In this example, the labor cost is split 40-60 between the two projects and the design cost is divided evenly. And as a result of fairly distributing the cost, the participant is eligible for the maximum incentive for each individual measure included in the project application. To support prompt review of the pre-approval application, it is recommended but not required to provide a summary breakdown identifying how eligible costs are or were allocated across the measures included in the project application. Complete ap applications lead to prompt approvals, helping the review team understand how you've approached the application, especially in this context, 
can help everyone get to the project execution faster.